not stay in the tomb and be our savior. For him to be in the tomb and claim to be the savior would be a mistake. Because a dead person can't save anybody. If you are in trouble, no matter how much of Aunt Zick is in love with you, I don't know you ain't got no name Zick. In love with you, and you in love with them, I am telling you something, that in spite of all the, the feelings that they have for you, when they die, they're done. They can't come back and defend you like culture will tell you they're coming back to blow good breeze on you. They ain't blowing no good breeze on you. Oh, you were hearing me this morning. Passing the child with a coffin, you know. And so, no dead savior can save you. The savior had to be a living savior, one with the power to conquer death. Are you hearing me? That's the difference between Jesus and Muhammad, Jesus and Buddha, Jesus and Krishna, he conquered death. Are you not hearing me? You should be excited about this. He conquered death. Death could not keep him in the grave. He conquered death. The others are still in the grave, but my Savior, my living Lord, my wonderful Savior is alive today. He is not in the tomb. What they saw were the linen garments in there, not Jesus. You can't find the right thing looking in the wrong place. In a dead church, get your Bible and get out. Oh, you hear me this morning. I said, I said, I said again. You in a dead church, they can't pray any prayer for God to do anything for you. Why are you wasting time there? Find some place where people know how to pray and to break through the walls of hell and to get your deliverance for you. Are you hearing me this morning, church? Looking for God in dead places. Looking for God in religion. You're not going to find him in religion. You're going to find him when you come and you call on his name. I've met some folk, all they can talk about is religion. They got no relationship with Jesus Christ. We ain't talking about religion. We're talking about relationship with Jesus because religion will not save you. It is your relationship with the risen Savior that will save you. Hallelujah. All of us got some kind of religion. We go to church on Easter Sunday. We go to church on Good Friday. We go to church New Year's Eve. Anybody still here this, this, this morning? But if you've got a relationship with the living Savior, it is not three days of a year. It is every day of the year. In the morning, in the midday, in the evening, and in the nighttime, you have a relationship 24-7 with God. But pastor, you mean I'm not going to do anything else? You're talking about a different story. I'm talking about a relationship with Him. Hallelujah. It makes the difference in your life. It makes the difference in your life. Glory be to God. Mary was looking in the wrong place for the right person. Mm -hmm. There was a disconnection between Jesus and his followers. The disconnect was not by, with Jesus. It was his followers who didn't believe that he was coming out of the tomb. Go to John chapter 20 verses 1, verse 1 and 2. John chapter 20 verse 1 and 2. The first day of the week cometh Mary early. And it was yet dark under the sepulchre, and seen the stone taken away from the sepulchre, verse 2. Then she run it, and come, come unto Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. They, referring to the, the, the religious people of that day that were responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus along with the Romans, they took the body of Jesus. It was not no day took the body of Jesus out of there. The word of God became manifest and Jesus came out of the tomb. Look at what they said. They have taken the Lord out of the sepulchre and we don't know where they have laid him. You're talking about an impotent savior. Where they have laid him. Where they placed him. We don't know. We don't know. 
But if they were following the word of God, they would have been convinced that Jesus was not going to be in the tomb for any length of time. He only went there to make sure that death is aware that he is the boss, that he is the one in charge, and that death is not in charge of him. And therefore, as a believer, that's why the apostle Paul said, absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Yesterday I was saying to my children, I have to make my will. And I caught the attention of my children. What are you talking about, my will? And I asked each one of them, who you want? <laughs> Gotta split the millions, you know. Gotta, what you want? One said, you know that heavy gold bracelet that you have that you don't wear? I want that one. You got it? I don't say I want all the rings that you have. You got it? The others can't make up their mind as to what they want. But let me tell you something. As a believer, you don't have to be afraid of death. Because Jesus, over 2,000 years, conquered death on your behalf or on my behalf. It's just an opportunity to take us into the divine presence of our God. And so when we look at what Paul says, absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. We live with this assurance that our lives will not end at the grave. There is something else there. There is something, we have something else beyond the grave that God is going to help us. I think of all the saints of the ages who have gone on to be with the Lord. People who love the Lord walk with God all of their lives. One of these days, they will hear the sound of the trumpet. And the Bible says, the dead in Christ shall arise first. And we who remain alive on his coming will be called up together to meet the Lord in the air. You are not living for God again. There is no hope. There is hope for you as a child of God. Because he lives, we are going to be able to live and not only live, but we will face the challenges of the day. Amen. Glory be to God. So why look in the wrong place for the right thing? Many people there are still looking for Jesus in dead places in the world. But I'll tell you something, my brothers and sisters, that look no further. Look in the word of God and you'll find where Jesus is. Look at John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. John 10, 17 and 18. Therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Hold the verse to me. Go back to verse number 17. Now you've got to be powerful to be speaking like this. Therefore, that my father loved me. Yes, you notice know, that? Because I laid down my life. It was voluntary. Nobody forcing him. May I say to you today that Jesus had the power to summon a legion of angels to take care of Judas and those folk who came to arrest him. But Jesus said before then, when he saw all that was going to come to him, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He saw the cross. He saw the rejection. He saw the forsake. He saw the forsaking him. He saw them abandoning him. He saw them leaving him alone. But Jesus said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Thy will be done. He said, therefore, that my father loved me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. Please give me verse.